coming to you live right now from the Overland Expedition Camper Building Olympics. That is right. We are here at the 2024 Overland Building Olympics. This is a big deal. We got a lot going on today. Whew, let's go through the agenda. What do we got going on today? We're going to go through the difference of track actuators and those controlled by a switch versus those with a controller and Hall effect sensors. This is going to be neat. As many of you know, in my camper, I have many electrified actions that take place inside the camper and also that will take place outside the camper that I haven't shown yet, but I've talked a little bit about. One of those actions right now is my bed platform, and that bed platform rises up into a day bed, so it folds up essentially into a, into a third that, that rises up. The two-thirds stays down, and that way so I keep my gear garage to a limited length so I can maximize my space inside the camper here, my living space. And then it folds down into a flat bed and then extends out over my dining table or my dining area that I have and so it still allows enough room for two people to sit in the dinette instead of four normally but at least two can still sit in there even with the bed all the way down so people can still have coffee or breakfast or things like that while someone else is in bed. I'm doing this electrically for a lot of different reasons I've talked about before but in part because it just makes everything a lot easier to actuate it that way and contain it in its space and all those things. However, I couldn't get exactly the linear actuators that I wanted in quite the size and or the length or the power that I needed. So I ended up going with four of them. And so I have two in each side, essentially, two in each vertical component that will rise up and down to lift the bed up and down. And then the other action, of course, it will slide out on its own via track as the bottom and, or the back of it goes up and down. The challenge I have is that with four different linear actuators, I have to manage four speeds. And of course, I have different speeds from side to side, and of course, different speeds on the two on each side. The actuators do say they can be plus or minus 10% on their speed. So I'm seeing plus or minus 20% over the four. So yes, they are all going somewhere between that plus or minus 10%. And so some are in the upper 10%, some are on the bottom of that 10%. So how am I going to, and I yet I want to control these with one switch, right? With one switch, I can control them all up and down. I don't want to manage different switches. That would get really complex trying to hold four switches down. What if you don't hold one of them down and then all of a sudden that one stops? Now you definitely have binding going on. With the two in each corner going up and down, they're probably going to equalize each other more or less. The slower one's going to slow down the faster one. The fast one's going to speed up the slower one. They should more or less equal each other. What I'm trying to do is get them timed so I have really an same average speed in each corner so that the average speed between them should be relatively the same or pretty close to the same. So that way I don't have any binding or something getting a little cockeyed in there. So I'm going to do a speed test. We're going to give this a shot. So let's take a look and let's test them out. So here are my four linear actuators. Here's my single switch. I've got them all wired in, positives and negatives, all into, into a Wago wire combiner. And so all the positives and negatives are wired into one. And then I've got a positive negative wire coming out and connected into my switch. Basically, pole connector to raise them up and down. And then, of course, my positive negatives from actual power to the switch and thus to all the actuators going through this as well. Anyway, so that, that and then go all to my linear actuators. I went ahead and marked each of my linear actuators with some of my friends out there in the overlanding community. And they're all going to basically do a little race up to the step 22 finish line here. And we're going to start at the Journal of Lost Time. So this is how it's going to play out. So I'm going to push my switch and hopefully all this is going to work. We now have positive and negative connected to my switch. If I've got everything wired up right, these should all go up. Let me start my timer. Here we go. Ready? Go. And nothing. Okay, that might have been down. Let's try the other way. Okay, they're all going in the same direction. And this is one of the benefits of using a switch is that it's just simply going to reverse polarity. So how you hook up positive and negative is almost just doesn't really matter. The switch will just change it to reverse direction of the actuators. Yes, it looked like those three took the lead. Swingle series is following up with their nice gradual pace to get there. Now, let's go ahead and stop my stopwatch. Let's reset it and let's go in reverse and let's see what happens here. Ready? Here we go. On your marks, get set, go. Got them all moving together. I know that Stringless Siri doesn't have a mount. That's okay. It's not going to change much here at all. You'll see here that the 10% differential in speed really can matter here when you're trying to make sure that all these actuators do move in synchronicity. It is looking like we're the Russos and High Rock Black are going to finish first. 
Russo's High Rock, Black Rock, Swing of Dreaming Adventures, and Swing of Siri. Okay. Let's go ahead and try this once again. Let's take them in reverse down to the Journal of Lost Time. Remember, this is not a race. This is an adventure. Here we go. I think it's pretty clear what we're going to have to do. We're going to put the two fast ones with one of the two slow ones. And one of the two slow ones is much slower than one of the other ones. Unfortunately, the two fast ones are nearly the same. So we're not going to quite average the same, which means we'll get a little bit cockeyed in the bed going up. Possibly. Possibly not. I think we're just going to have to give it a try. Maybe we only try with two. I think we're going to need all four of these actuators, though. I did install all four with two on each side of my lifting mechanism for the bed and it worked out fine. Here's a photo from that pre-everything pre being installed. But the 24 inch actuators were not quite long enough so I decided to go ahead and upsize them to a custom 26 inch ones and some beefier ones. So let's go now over to those. All right, Casey, that's right. It's a big day here at Overlanding Building Expedition Camper 2024 Olympics and right now we have progressive automations race going on right here linear actuator race That's right. It's a linear actuator race and these are not just regular linear actuators These are track linear actuators very different than your standard linear actuators Really used for specialty applications where the length does not change when it's all the way extended all the way tracked It's exactly the same pretty remarkable device here It follows a track that is right and we're gonna have a race between two of these right here And what's interesting about this race is this is not your typical race. We're just going to go ahead and line them up like we did in our previous competition with our four regular track actuators. These now are connected to a Hall effect sensor. That's right, a Hall effect sensor. This is a really interesting device in that it actually should make these two actuators basically come in exactly on the line. I mean, we're talking down to the fractions of a second here. We are going to set up down at the end there, finish line. We're going to have a camera literally at the finish line to see so we can do it in slow motion and determine if they really did come in right on the line. So here we go. Let's go ahead and go for the setup right now with these Hall Fix sensors with the controller. And controllers pretty much plug and play. A couple things you have to think about is really the length of the cables from where you're installing the actuators to where you want the controller to be and voltage. All right, so what we have going on right now to get this race going is we have a temporary ground and a temporary positive or positive and negative for our DC power coming in. That's 24 volt power coming in. Whew, it's a big day here at Expedition Camper Building Olympics speed competition. I am going to go ahead and put my red to my white wire. Uh oh, is black supposed to be positive? I know, should not have to do this. Put red on black. All right, after a major fault on the line, that major fault being black wire is positive. All right, we're back. We're back after that little almost penalty call there, preventing that penalty from happening. We went ahead and tied our positive now into a 15 amp fuse. These two track actuators should use just a little over 10 amps, probably at full load. They're going to not have any full load on right now. We're just going while we do this race test, but we're going to see. We do have a fault here. We do not want a big penalty. We're going to blow some line or bigger fuse upstream. We want to keep that really penalty isolated right here at our local fuse box. I'm going to tie it in with my lower voltage or lower amperage fuses. So we do have a fault. It's at least limited to this location on this field here, in this fuse box. For safety here, what we have going on, we're gonna wrap up our positive here. We could wrap up either positive or negative, doesn't matter, as long as we're insulating the two from each other. You don't want a big spark or shock between these two. So, all right, we got light. That's good, we got light, we're good. We're in action here. We got 25.9 inches. I think these are 26 inch actuators. Yes, they are 26 inch actuators right here. So we got 25.9. Look at that, look at that, they're rolling, they're rolling, they're rolling, they're going, they're going. Back right at you from 2024 Expedition Camper Building Olympics. This is a big deal. Are we ready for this action? This is a big, big deal. We're going to see who can win here. Is it Motocraft Adventure Development? Largest overlander Expedition Camper Builder, builder of my Expedition Camper windows and skylights and entry door. Yes, those all don't look as pretty right now because they're still getting built in, but man, they are looking all right. Okay, now. Overland Expo Pacific Northwest where we were in showcase vehicle in 2022. Let's hope we can go back there and be a Expedition Camper showcase vehicle in 2025. Uh-oh. No, it's not programmed to full extent. Well, it's not to program that. We will have to manually hold this button down, but they are both connected into the FLTCON-24 volt dual channel controller. 
by Progressive Automations. And look at this. It looks like a complete even split tie. It's hard to say he's going to come in last year or first. Down to the wire. Oh, my God. Does that look like that is tight? Let's go to the finish line camera. And as you'll see here from the finish line camera, they come in exactly to the finish line at the same time. This is the real benefit of a Hall effect sensor and a controller, is this is going to control them to the same speed and same position, and they will finish and start exactly the same and be always be in the same position. So now my bed will always be moving up and down, left and right, exactly the same. And this is another nice benefit of having a controller, is it tells you the position of the actuators. I'm going to go ahead and try hitting button number one. We're going to see button number one takes us all the way down to full retract. Let's see if that happens. Ready? And it's going, it's going, they're going, they're coming. Let's see what happens here. Oh my gosh, we definitely got a race going on. Let's see here, what what's going on? We got Motocraft, we got Overland Expo, we got to fix their logo a little bit here. And they're coming in, they're coming in for a finish. It's gonna be really tight. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be down to the wire. It's gonna be down to the wire. What's our action cam gonna say at the wire? Oh, it looks perfect. It looks like it was a complete tie. Imagine that, a complete tie. And wow, back to you over at the finish line, KC. And this is another big benefit of having a controller. Is you can have these presets, four different presets for different heights, maximum, minimum, or anywhere in between. Whew, I am exhausted. This was an exciting race, no doubt about it, with these linear track actuators. Model number PA18 by Progressive Automations. That's right. It looks like it came all the way down the wire, and they were exactly in line. It came in a finish right down to the exact wire all the way down to a fraction of a second we don't even know if it was down to hundreds of a second a thousands of a second we can't tell any difference between them and that is the real benefit of a hall effect sensor with your linear actuators and a controller we are now going to program in these buttons so we can have some presets four being fully extend one being fully attract and we got a couple middle and that way this bed now can go into our day bed with a nice recline position to sit and relax during the daytime a nice all the way down and out position now all the way out to here uh, but at night where we can sleep in our full queen bed and then of course all the way back up like it is right now in our fully of course extended put away position so that we can fully use this nice four plus person dinette bench super exciting to get these new track actuators installed with their controller oh Boy, what an exciting race. What else are we going to come up with here for our 2024 Expedition Camper Building Olympics? Hang tight, keep watching, and we'll have some exciting more updates for you soon. All right, and there is so much more coming up, so much more. We've got solar slide outs, we got the under stamp storage, the under camper storage boxes. Man, these are cool and big. There's even an over cab storage boxes that are coming, and you can see there's still a lot of wood and other finished materials starting to come into this camper. It's starting to look more homey. A lot more to come. Thanks for watching.